Hey there, Bruce, and welcome back to the Game of Fortune and what is most likely the final episode of Gambling Survivor or whatever the game was called, where Devin is going to be having to play against Teresa, which is probably not going to go very well. Assuming we know Devin's past and Teresa's behavior, you know, it's not going to go well. But we didn't have to make that many, or like 40 something, it was 40 something tokens, something like that. Anyway. So we need to win like one good one. I don't know what we're playing here though. What? I just, I got a bad feeling about it. Maybe it's whatever it said. Maybe she's reading me or something, but I sure as heck don't have the confidence to go into a few rounds of poker with her. And you think I can? Devin, you got one advantage over her, and that's that she hasn't played a game with you yet. She doesn't know how you think, or how you'll act. And you only have to win a small amount, Devin. You'll get one good play in her and then it's all over. I'm sure you can do it. Don't let her ski. Oh, no. No, no, not this. Anything but this. He's got a good point, Devin. All you need is one decent win and it'll all be over. I'm certain that you hold our best chances at winning. No, no, please don't say that. You two have better chances than me. I can't do this. I can't. Why not? Is it your fear of gambling or dist distaste for it? Are you afraid of Teresa? I assure you, she's just as human as you or me. Shut up. Just stop talking. Don't put all ex ex these expectations on me. I don't want to be the one that has to save the day here. Especially not against her of all people. I pointed at Teresa and she simply winked at me. So just figure it out yourselves. I took a step back away from the table. I didn't want to play anything. I didn't want to be responsible for, play for anything here. Panic began to well up in my chest and before I knew it I had scurried off to hide in some corner behind a casino slot. If I wasn't there then... If it wasn't there then someone else would have to play. Alphonse, Everett, they're both better at this than me. I don't have any skills that could beat that monster. She gut me before I even had a chance of victory. And more terrifying, all the scorn and hatred I'd get if I messed up. They could hate me for being a coward. They could hate, hate me for not pulling my weight. But this is better, right? It was better than I do... The better I do nothing than make things worse. To fail and be unable to meet their expectations. This is for the best. It's for the best. It's for the best. Devon? Everett had managed to find me and my first instinct was to curl up and turn away from him. I'm not going, no matter what you say, I'm not. I'm not going to play against her. Everett said nothing and just took a seat next to me. You don't have to worry, Alphonse is busy playing against Teresa now. Good, he's got a better shot at victory than me. Is there something I'm missing here? I'm sorry if Alphonse and I made it too serious of a demand on you. We certainly should have been more considerate of your feelings on the matter. But if I may ask, your reaction was more volatile than I expected. Is there more to this gambling issue than you've told us? I was quiet for a few seconds, still unsettled and unsure about whether I should open up and even, even a smidge with this guy. He was suspicious as hell, he certainly had ulterior motives, but right here, right now, he seemed to care about me. Maybe I could just tell him a little, just so he won't probe too deeply. It's not the gambling, I mean, I mean it kind of is, but it's more just the expectations. Expectations? I pulled my knees closer to my chest. Yeah, I don't like the pressure of high expectations. I get nervous. My heart starts beating like crazy. I just shut down. And it gets worse when I know I'm going to fail. So when you and Alphonse were saying that I'd have to go up against Teresa, I was terrified. The woman that could play poker in a way that I just didn't understand. And she could keep up with you and your card counting. Against her, I just don't stand a chance. I don't have any skills, any talents, any abilities that would let me win a game against her. I see. I think I understand now. I was just assuming you'd be happy to step up to the challenge. I've always been the type happy to prove myself to others. When I was given a task, I wanted to show my skills, show that I could do great things. I've always been that way ever since I was a young boy I wanted to overachieve. To have a sterling reputation, I assume most people did as well. It was a double-edged sword at times. Whenever I failed, well, I would often get spiteful and angry. The only thing I hated more than failing was seeing someone else succeed over me. It's a fatal flaw, I'll admit. Sometimes it would lead me to lashing out. And yet at the same time, I also expect others to try and do their best too, even if it made me angry to know that they might be better than me. Thus, I always end up expecting the same out of others as I do myself, but that's just not fair. Everyone's different, I should know better than anyone, but like I said, it's just a flaw of mine. I know that you're ultimately still scared of the idea of playing cards against Teresa, and I don't blame you. She gives the impression of having everything under her control, that she somehow understands things ten steps ahead of you. But she's human and has flaws like anyone else. I won't force you to, but if you do decide to try and beat Teresa, well, I can offer you one hint that might help you win. 
She has a flaw that you can exploit. It's pretty obvious actually, but it's hard to pick up on if you're not looking for it. Plus, she tries to hide it, but she slips up from time to time. Anyway, all you have to do is... I guess I see what you mean. It does seem like a pretty obvious floor of hers. Indeed it is. Anyway, I'm not expecting you to play. After all, this is your choice. But if you do decide to give it a shot, well, I can only hope that the advice I gave you ends up helping you in some way. I won't be mad, disappointed or anything with whatever you choose to pick. And that's a promise more than anything. If you say so. Now how about we play a little game to help ease your nerves? Everett held out his hand and made a fist. Rock, paper, scissors? Easy enough game, don't you think? Okay. I took a deep breath. No expectations, this was just a game. We threw a few hands and I could feel myself starting to ease up again. Maybe I was getting used to this or maybe playing a simple game with no stakes was easy. It was, I wasn't even keeping track of how many hands I won, lost or tied, I was just going through the motions, thinking, how the hell was I going to get through this? Eventually I had eased up enough that I could stand and walk back over toward the table. I saw Teresa and Alphonse playing poker once again, except this time... Alphonse looked much more frustrated than before. I looked over his credit count and it was a fair bit smaller than I remembered. Once he noticed us, he stood up from the table. That's it, I'm done. I can't keep bleeding credits like this. Oh, but we're having so much fun. <sighs> Teresa cleaned up the table, handing the playing cards that were on the table back to Belle. Alphonse walked over toward us and took a breath to calm himself while he was speaking. You feeling alright, Devin? Yeah, I'm feeling a bit better. Sorry to say, but I lost 100 credits playing with Teresa. It was only a few hands, but I couldn't get a read on her. She was just playing me like a fiddle. And it's still a manageable amount. That only means we need to make 145 credits. Yeah, well, we've got about 10 minutes of playing time left. So I'll have to figure something out. I'll do it. Huh? Alphonse seemed completely surprised by my willingness to play. Probably because I was shaking like a leaf in a hurricane as I spoke. Even now, I wasn't sure about all this, but Teresa would crush everyone else. If I didn't step up, then we'd all die, right? You sure you want to give it a go? I mean... Honestly, no, but it's our best bet, isn't it? Alphonse shot a glare at Everett. Did you do this? I swear if you pressured her into this, I'll... I didn't pressure her into anything. I just had a talk with her to calm me down. A talk, huh? Please don't get into a fight now of all times. I'm doing this because I want to live. I'm our best shot at this, right? You'll all have done what you can, so I have to pull my own weight here. Even so. Alphonse, no matter your opinion of me, you have to admit that Devon is our best shot at winning this. If she wants to try and win this, I say let her. Alphonse let out a heavy sigh and glanced at Teresa, who waggled her fingers at him. Alright, just be careful, okay? I've seen how much this woman toys with people. I wouldn't want you to get trapped in her methods. I know, I know. I'll be ready. Can you give us a quick rundown of what's happened since we left, Alphonse? Not much. After your blackjack game, the table got cleaned up and then Devon left. You went after her and then Belle chimed in saying that someone needed to play with Teresa or would be getting penalised for time. So I sat back down to play poker. Teresa got another deck of cards from her trolley over there and we played. Lost too many hands and too many credits. Then you all came around and Teresa cleaned up the table once again. You saw her, right? She just put a deck of cards back in the trolley near Belle. Okay, good. Just then she hasn't had time to tamper with anything. Then I guess I'll go then. Everett gave me a supportive pat on the back. He didn't say anything more. No expectations, no wishes of good luck. Just a small smile that communicated everything. Good luck, kid. Good luck. I'm gonna need a hell of a lot, of a lot more than luck. But let's hope it's on my side, at least. And there was there Teresa was, sitting eagerly at the table across from me with a soft smile on her face. But with just a smile, that was enough to get a vibe from her. It was like a predator glaring down its prey. Devon, Devon, Devon. He's shaking like a newborn fawn. Actually, that's a pretty apt comparison. You know how vulnerable those little creatures are when they're born? They have to quickly learn to walk and follow their parents or they get eaten alive by predators. So Devon, do you think you'll be able to stand on your own feet? Even when you're facing down a deadly predator ready to tear you limb from limb? Teresa's words didn't help ease me. In fact, I started quivering even more. Which I'm pretty sure was her intention anyway. Well, there you go again, shaking like you're stuck in a blizzard. Relax, it's just a metaphor. I'm not going to lunge out of some foliage and sink my teeth into you. Oh no, did I ski you too much? I'm sorry, Devin. Here, let me ease your heart a bit. I know you're probably not sure what kind of games we should play, but I've actually thought ahead, you know. I figured two perfect games that are simple and easy to understand. One poker and dice in the hole. I've never heard of those games before. But one poker is a card game and dice in the hole is a dice game. I'll go into more details of each game once you pick one. But I promise, they're both fair and simple. 
can't get his guess on Rose will just pick one then. There was no way I'd be able to beat Teresa in a bunch of other games and this, this can work out for me if whatever it told me is true. Best to dive in and try and figure out what to do afterwards. Oh god, I have to pick? Dice in a hole. I'll play dice in a hole. Great, great. Allow me to set up the game, it's quite simple. Belle, can you hand me what I need? Belle nodded and began to search for her trolley. She handed Belle some kind of brown bowl, a pair of dice and some kind of plastic strip. Is that it? That's it, you don't need a bunch of supplies in order to play. But let me explain the rules and how to play and you can tell me what you think. Dice in a hole is a simple game, it's simply beating odds. We start by setting a bowl face down. Teresa demonstrated by playing the bowl face down on the table. Then you make a bet on the range you think the dice will end up rolling on. A range? Yeah, instead of just picking a single number, you pick a range of one number and two num and the two numbers beside. For example, you could pick a 6, 7, 8 as your range. And if the dice total ends up as a 6, 7 or 8, then you win, and you get the appropriate payout. As another example, you could pick 9, 10, 11, 3, 4, 5. The highest or lowest ranges you can pick would be 11, 12 or 2, 3 respectively. She took a moment to slide a plastic strip toward me. That shows all the payouts for each range respectively. Okay. I took a quick glance over the piece of plastic. It listened out it, it I listened out the payout it listed out the payouts and the probabilities of each result, sorry. Super simple, see? All you need to do is put the betting chip on a single number and then determine what your base betting number is. And that determines the ranges that you're betting on. After that, you decide how much you want to bet with your credits. Once you take care of that, then we just play the game. I dropped the dice into the hole. She pressed on top of the bowl, and a square hole opened up, big enough to fit two dice in. She tossed in the two dice, and I could hear them clink as they bounced a bit inside. After that, you shake the bowl until you're nice and satisfied. I shake it? Teresa nodded. I raised an eyebrow and pulled the bowl over toward me and began to shake it around. I could hear the dice rattling inside, so they were definitely still in there. Now once you're done, you put the bowl back in the middle of the table and lift it straight up. I did as she asked and looked at the two dice that were flat on the table now. Once you do that, we add up the dice totals. If they're in your range, then you win, otherwise you lose. She picked up the dice and motioned for me to put the bowl back down on the table. Then we do it all over again. Super simple, right? Yeah, I guess it's simple. I furrowed my brow and looked over everything once again. The only things that we used in this game were the dice and the pot. It was a game that I had control over. Wasn't it? I mean, Teresa couldn't do anything. I was the one who decided what to bet, how many credits to put on the line. I even got to shake the bowl once my dice were in it. And ter all Teresa did was toss them in the bowl. Can I look over everything, like check the dice in the bowl? Of course you can. Teresa pushed everything to my side of the table. First I decided to check the dice, so a standard six-sided dice that you'd expect. I rolled them a few times to see if they were loaded. Not that I'd really know for sure, but, well, they seemed to be fair dice. Next, I looked at the bowl. Aside from the little hatch on top of it, it seemed to be a normal bowl. I couldn't see anything on the inside or outside of it, and I couldn't feel any weird grooves or spots on it either. Content? I guess, everything seems fair. Great, then you agree to the rules from before. Yeah, everything looks good to me. Teresa nodded and then took, the, took back the dice and bowl, setting them appropriately on the table. Now let's get started. The first move is on you, after all. I took out my credits and laid them on the table. I need to make 145 credits through this game. If I were lucky, I'd be able to make it with a few rolls, but... I looked back at Teresa, who winked at me. I doubt she'd want to make it easy, so she's going to have some type of trick or scheme with this game. For now, it's best... For now, though, the best to see if I can get lucky. I get 111 credits. I can make a large bet on a range with better odds and lower payout. A medium-sized bet with worse odds and a better payout. Or a small-sized bet with terrible odds but a huge payout. There's pros and cons for each. If I make a large bet and lose, I'll have more credits to catch up, but a smaller bet is more likely to lose, and I might just be tossing credits away on a 1 in 12 chance. Oh well, no point fussing. Let's do it. I mean, I'm always the kind of person to play for odds. So, large bet, high odds. I'm going to bet 65 credits on the range 6, 7, 8. Place the chip on the betting slide and then push up the chips. Well, if you get it, then you win. Teresa picked up the two dice from before and shook them both in, in both their hands before dropping them in the bowl. Dice in the hole. She cheered as she pushed the bowl over to me. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Nothing. I'm just nervous. You? Nervous? Of course. These dice can determine your fate and mine. It's all unlady luck at this point. 
Even someone like me gets nervous at the idea of losing one bad roll. I pulled the bowl toward me and gave it a hearty shake. I could hear the sound of dice shaking and I kept wondering when I should stop. The odds are in my favour, or at least these are the best odds I could hope for. I just needed the dice to add up to 6, 7 or 8. Any of those and I'll win. So please, please, just give me one of those numbers and let me out of this hell hole. I stopped shaking the bowl and pushed it back toward the middle and looked at Teresa. She had her eyes focused on the bowl. Oh, here goes nothing. Please. I raised the bowl up in the air and looked at the dice. One dice was a six and the other was a four. Ten. Defeat. Fuck. Fuck. I clutched my head and watched as Teresa pulled away my credits. Phew, talk about a tense situation. That's how the cookie crumbles, isn't it? Teresa flashed me a smile while I was panicking out of control. Shit, shit, shit. Why did I make that bet? I should've done- should I- shouldn't I have done something else? Why, why, why? <laughs> Teresa was giggling to herself as she played around with the dice in her hands, tossing them back and forth. Oh, Devin, don't despair. There's still a few chances for you to make a comeback. I mean, if you give up now, all my hard work will have gone to waste. Or your hard work? Of course, you don't think it was just by design that we're playing this game now, do you? Believe me, it was a lot of hard work. What are you talking about? Let me put it this way. Alphonse won as many credits as he did because I wanted him to. Ideally, he was only supposed to get around 300 credits, but then he just... Well, he had to push his luck. That's why I was so angry. He would have ruined everything if he won too many credits. He would have ruined our chances to play together. You mean you... you were planning on letting him win? Just enough, Devin. Just enough that he could think. He did all that he could. But enough of that. Let's play another round, shall we? Teresa was tossing the dice up and down in her hand, mocking me as they plopped back into her hand. My fate literally in her hand. There was a different look in her eyes now. There was no shred of nervousness. There was full confidence. As though she were totally in control now. There was no sense of fear or panic in her eyes anymore. She felt in full control, which meant that she had to be cheating somehow. She just had to be. I just need to be able to catch her in the act somehow. If I could do that, then... All right, all right. Focus, Devin. Be aware of everything. This is your chance. Just play along and wait to see what she does. And then when she slips up, that's when you'll strike. Okay, another round. It's not impossible. I can win this. I just have to make some smart choices now. That's the spirit, Devin. You're not down and out until the game's said and done. So what you'd be betting on. Okay, well, I have 46 credits left. What I need to make is 210 credits to make up for what I lost. So naturally, that means I've got to make a 35 credit bet and then hope it lands on a time six payout. Well, you could do that. You could go for a safer bet. Are you willing to take that risk? I, I am. I growled with determination. Good, good. I'll go ahead and make your bet then. I glared at Teresa but nevertheless made a bet. I decided to go on the low end this time, going for the 234. If I lost this, all I'd have would be a measly 11 credits. But I had to do it. I had to go for a big win. Alright, well, let's do this again, shall we? Dice in the hole. She tossed the dice to the bowl once again and then pushed the bowl over to me. But I get nervous now. You can get a miracle of a win right here. I was spitting bullets as I held the bowl in my hand and began to shake it. She chuckled but kept her eyes on the bowl. Was this the moment to try and catch a cheat? She was acting cocky and confident as usual, but was this the right moment? Is Teresa cheating right now? Probably. I don't have an answer for that though. I'm gonna say no. No, no, I wasn't sure. This isn't the right time. As much as I wanted to, I had to stay strong and wait for the right moment. If I was lucky, then I'd win it all right here, here at all, after all. Come on, come on. Dice, please be with me. I stopped shaking the bowl and raised it off the table. Why? Why, 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 why? I glared at the two dice on the table. Twelve, a fucking twelve. Two sixes, goddamn two sixes. Cut me a goddamn break. I slammed the bowl back down on the table and pressed my hands into my head. Oh, that's so sad, Devin. Teresa clicked her tongue but still wiped my credits away. Now I need eleven. Eleven measly credits. <sighs> My body felt hot again, and I could feel tears starting to well up in my eyes. Oh, Devin, don't cry, it's not over yet. Teresa reached across the table and raised my head up with her hand. We've still got a little more left to play. Surely you can do one more hand. Who knows, maybe you'll get lucky. Hit a jackpot, you can start your comeback from there. There's still a little hope, isn't there? You can't give up. Clyde's waiting for you the other side, isn't he? Anisha was just taunting me, teasing me, doing everything she could to rile me up. But it still hurt, it still stung, and I just wanted to lash back out of there. But if you want to give up, give in, well, I won't stop you. Shut up. I'll play another round. Yeah, yeah. Her smile grew wider as she looked me right in the eye. That's the spirit. That's the defiance and determination I'm looking for. Oh, Devin, this is what I've been looking for all game. 
calculating how much on average Everett would win from card counting, Alphonse's little poker winnings too. It's all led up to this, you know that, don't you? She swiped the dice from the table and tossed them in the air again. So what are you going to bet? I mean, I know you're probably going to go all in with the 11 credits you have, but what number? It was a 12 before, so I'll bet on the low end this time. Ah, the gambler's fallacy then, huh? Thinking that it can't possibly be super high again, so you have to go low, right? Shut up, I, I started to feel tears well up in my eyes again. I was starting to panic again. What was the right move? High or low? High or low? High or low? Should I even try to go for a big bet? Maybe better stay somewhere in the middle. No, 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 I don't have time to make small bets. I've got to go big or go home. I'm going for the 2-3 spread. I pushed my final 11 credits on the table and tried to focus. Tried my best to stay calm, even if every part of my body was screaming in terror wanting to run away from this whole situation. Gotcha, gotcha. Teresa, on the other hand, was happily tossing dice back and forth between her hands, giggling away like a schoolgirl. Are you sure you want to do that though, Devin? I mean, your life is on the line here. If you lose now, you're dead meat. Done. Gone. No second chances. Are you ready to put not just your life, but Everett and Alphonse's at risk too? Shut up, shut up, shut up. Just throw the dice. My vision was getting hazy and my heart felt like it was going to jump out of my chest. Alright, just don't say I didn't warn you. She laughed as she popped the dice in the bowl. Dice in the hole! And she pushed the, di the bowl back over toward me. I had sh started to shake it without thinking. I was hoping, praying that somehow I'd be able to get the number I needed. All I did was imagine the numbers. Two, three, two or three, two or three, two or three. I kept shaking the bowl over and over and over, hoping that maybe now the dice were just right. They were just per that they were perfect. After I thought I shook it enough, I looked up at my, at, through my misty eyes to see Teresa glaring right at me, waiting for me to raise the bowl. This is it. This would be my last chance. If I thought Teresa were, were cheating, this would be the last opportunity to call her out on it. But if she didn't cheat, if she was really playing fair, then I'd be dooming myself by claiming she was cheating. What do I do? Is now the moment? I mean, if we don't say yes, we're gonna die. Yeah, she was definitely cheating now. I shook my bow a little and tried to think, how was I going about this? Gonna go about this to make sure I didn't screw up. I need to get my thoughts in order first. Okay, let's think. Starting with the basics. What's Teresa using to cheat? Ugh, my guess? Either the dice or the table. The, di the table wasn't checked. So let's go with the table, shall we? Sorry about all the saving. Perhaps it's the table. Maybe Teresa's able to alter the table in some way that helps her. Like maybe some set of dice pops up underneath the bowl and scoop out the ones that she tossed in. That's stupid. Even if that happened, there's a chance I might end up rattling around the dice by moving the bowl. And if she wanted to do it right before I raise the bowl, I'm sure I would have noticed. So it can't be that. It must be the dice then. It's gotta be the dice. No matter how you think about it, Teresa must be messing with the dice somehow. The game's based around what values the two dice end up as. If you can find a way to manipulate that, then you don't have to worry about your opponent winning. So the next question is, when did Teresa have time to set up this cheat? She was always being watched by someone in our group, and no one seems to have noticed anything. She set this up before the game's even started. Or if they have, they, ha they can't speak on it now, since they'd be interfering with our game. But there must have been a time for Teresa to have messed with the dice, a time when she'd be able to get them ready in case she needed them. If I think about it carefully, there was an opportunity here yeah, before we even started. Before the start of the game. Teresa had time to prepare this cheat before the start of the game, didn't she? That's why she picked the game. If you I don't understand why Devon would let her pick the game. That's absolutely insane. After all, she did get to ask Belle whatever, for whatever material she needed. But the problem is that even if she prepared the materials, she didn't have a chance to prepare for the opportunity. Alphonse checked the table and everything before he played. So while Teresa might have prepared the cheat earlier, she didn't get the chance to actually set it up properly until later. Let's think this through one more time. Between Alphonse and Everett's game? There was a big conversation then. Let's try that one. It had to be between Alphonse and Everett's games. That's right, there was a moment when she was showing games to Everett and then put one of them under the table. I didn't think about it at the time, but that must have been when everything was prepared. That just means there's one th one more thing left. How did she sneak in the di sneak the dice without anyone noticing? After all, we're all watching. There must have been some point in which she was able to get them into play without us noticing. Or rather, me noticing. Alphonse and Everett might have seen it from their perspective, but whatever she's doing might have flown over their, my head. 
But if I think about how she's been playing her usual antics and routines, something will have stood out, right? If I think about it like that, I'm sure I can figure out exactly when she snuck in the cheating dice. Just before that last hand. No. It's gotta be when she threw the dice in the bowl, right? Was it when she threw the dice into the bowl? No, by the time she'd already swapped out the dice. She only tossed them in the bowl once she already had them in her hand, really. So it must have been before that. Oh, when she tossed the dice between her hands. Yeah, that must have been it. It was too odd of a thing for her to do, tossing the dice from one hand to the other. She never did that before. She must have been replacing the regular die with the cheating die. Maybe she snuck the cheating die in one hand and just juggled them between her hands without me noticing. I mean, there's no way to tell the die apart when they're being flung around like that. A die looks like a die. But there's one way to really confirm all this. Um, Devon? Huh? You've been shaking that bowl for a while now. You're almost out of time, you know. Yeah, I guess you're right. Teresa, if I win this, then I'll get a 12 times payout, right? Because that's the odds I have to win, right? 1 in 12? Of course, the payouts are based on probability. In your case, you're betting on getting that 1 in 12 chance, and hey, you never know, you might get it. Yeah, I guess it's possible. Alright, well, here goes nothing. I stopped shaking the bowl and held my breath. This would be the moment. The determined, that determined if I would survive or die. I lifted the bowl off the table. A five and a six. Eleven. I lost. That's definitely a loss. But that's what I expected the whole time, wasn't it? I looked up at Teresa who was staring into my eyes and for a moment I saw just what I was looking for. Confusion. Huh? Why are you? For a split second she seemed completely baffled. And she tried to hide it as she reached for the chips and dice on the table. Oh, that's a loss, Devin. You know what that means. I smacked her hands away, snatching the dice in my hands and pulling the chips away from her. No, you don't get to take my chips away, especially since you cheated. Well, this is an interesting development. You lost the first... You lost. The first thing you do is call me a cheater. That's rude. Awfully rude. Might I ask where you're getting the idea that I cheated? It's right here. And these dice. I showed the dice up and inspected them closely. And that's when I saw it. Both the dice, they only have fours, fives, or sixes printed on them. There was no one, two, or three on any of them. These dice are rigged as shit, look at them. They aren't normal dice. Huh, would you look at that, they certainly aren't normal dice. So that's proof you cheated. You use these dice to keep me from ever having a chance to win the round. That's a bit presumptuous, don't you think? Maybe the dice just broke down from all the shaking. <laughs> what? Trust me, I know that some dice are built to have multiple faces, but they can break down over time. Perhaps the shaking damaged the dice so the other faces fell off or something. <laughs> that doesn't make any fucking sense. What kind of asinine bullshit are you trying to pull on me? For starters, we would have noticed if the dice we were shaking started to break down. And secondly, why would you even ask for a dice that would break down in such a way? Well, you know. I do know. The truth is you prepared these dice just so you could cheat when I made a drastic bet and assured yourself that I, could, I would lose. Oh, Devin, that's so rude. When would I even have the time to prepare something like that? Well, obviously before the game, but if you want specifics, it was right after Alphonse's first game and before Everett's. Hmm? I remember you were asking Everett what kind of game to play, and he brought up Liar's Dice twice and had four dice ready to use. Oh, it's quick and easy to play Liar's Dice with four dice. Right, but you knew that Everett wouldn't play that game. That's when you hid your rigged dice, where you had a set of four, five, six dice and one, two, three dice. You even put the dice behind the table so you'd be able to grab them when, for when I played this game. Oh, creative. Very creative. When you put it like that, you make it sound like I was really aiming to cheat against you with rigged dice. You were. Still, let's assume you're right and I had some rigged dice back here behind the table. How exactly would I swap them out? I mean, you inspected the initial dice I had. Those are normal. Maybe someone else snuck the rigged die. Are you sure it was me? I'm sure it was you. You were just sneaking in how you swapped out... Sneaky in how you swapped out the dice. You were playing with the dice before, tossing them up and down whenever I was making a bet. But one time you changed things up. Instead of tossing them in one hand, you began to toss them between the other two. You waited to know what kind of bet I was making to pick the right rigged dice. If I bet on the high range of 11 and 12, you'd pick the 1, 2, 3 dice. If I picked on the low range of 2 to 3, you'd pick the 4, 5, 6 dice. After all, after that, all you had to do was palm the rigged dice from under the table with one hand and toss them between the other, one another. To me, it would look like you were just tossing the original two dice, but really you were juggling around four. Interesting, yeah, I like the idea where I'm a juggler. There's just one thing I'm really wondering about, Devin. One thing that's really making this hard for me to swallow. What might that be? Oh, it sounds to me like you're saying I only use this cheat once. Why wouldn't I use it all the other times when you bet? Well, in hindsight, I bet that you did cheat more than once. You probably cheated in the first die roll. You were checking to see if you were even aware of what you what you were doing. If I was even aware of what you were doing, and if you could get away with the trick. That's why you were so relieved after things worked out. 
You were sure you could take control of things from there. I had to make more drastic bets, more unlikely wins, and you let probability do its thing. Until now. Until now, huh? What made this round so special? I resort to cheating, huh? What made it so special was I was desperate. Truly desperate. And you wanted to have control over snatching away that very last bit of hope I had. You wanted to personally see when the last bit of hope died in me. That's right, her fatal flaw. I knew about it before I sat down to play. I won't force you, but if you decide to try and beat Teresa, well, I can offer you one hint that might help you win. Because she's human and she has a flaw like anyone else. It's pretty obvious actually, but it's hard to pick up on if you're not looking for it. Plus she tries to hide it, but she slips up from time to time. Anyway, all you have to do is watch her eyes. Watch her eyes? Yes, if she's got something planned, some scheme, some plot, she's going to use it when you're at your lowest. You're most desperate. Once you're there, she's going to put it into action. And then look into your eyes. She'll want to see it the moment your hope exhausts into nothing. She can hide it against people who expect it, but against you? She won't try and hide her sadistic urges. And you can use that against her. But how? That'll be up to you. If you know she's get what that she's going to try and beat you, cheat you, or outplay you, then you'll have to figure out what she's doing. When she's glaring at you, that's a sign that something's up, and you have to figure out what she's doing. Either way, it's a weak point you can take advantage of to try and wrest the situation back into your control. I guess I see what you mean. It does seem like a pretty obvious flaw of hers. Indeed it is. You want to personally have a hand in killing me with this damn cheat of yours. And I bet if we take a look behind the table, check your side, we'll find that you have the normal dice there along with another set of rigged dice. That or they're on your person. So just admit it, you cheated, Teresa. You know what? You're good. A bit more of a quick thinking than you let on, huh? Maybe I am. Probably comes to having to work in a hectic kitchen all the time. It's a good trait to have. Let's you catch on to things quick. Alright, I admit it. I swapped out the dice for some rigged ones. So you admit it, you cheated then. You don't have any rights to my credits and I get to... Hold on, when I ever admit to cheating? You just said you swapped out the dice. And? That doesn't mean I cheated. How does it not? Devin, you need to have sharper ears. When did I say that using the dice in the game were fair? What? Well, it's implied. Implied? All I said was I'd toss in two dice into a bowl. I never once said the dice had to be standard dice, or they had to be the usual, have the usual pips on them. That's bullshit and you know it. By that logic you could use any kind of dice. Oh really? Well, why don't we ask Belle what she thinks? I looked over to Belle who was watching each of us closely. Belle, what do you think? It does seem like a moment when I should chime in, right? Yeah, go on Belle. Tell her that she's cheating. Using rigged dice or unorthodox dice technically does not break the rules as listed. Are you fucking with me? The hell did Teresa get do to get you to agree with that bullshit? Did she fucking pray on your goddamn hands and knees? No, it's just the rules of state don't explicitly disallow abnormal die. Yeah, but they don't disallow pulling out a rocket launcher and shooting Teresa in the head either. I mean, you can't specify literally everything. <laughs> The only thing she specified in regards to the dice was that they had to be thrown in the bowl, and that the added totals would determine the outcome of the game. So using abnormal dice is still fair in the context of the game's rules. You gotta be kidding me. She could be using a fucking rigged dice the whole time and it would have been would have all be, been all fair. Well, Devin, look at this way. If you suspected I was using rigged dice, you could have adjusted your odds. It goes both ways. It's not like I ever lied to you or told you that I was using fair dice either. But on to the more important matter, you claimed that I cheated and Belle has decided that I haven't. So I believe you know what that means. She reached for my credits once again. Fuck, fuck, she was going to screw me over if I didn't do something. Think, think, there had to be something you can do. The, the, I still have something to say. You, that's, think, figure something out. There must have been something that you can use. The, the, the payouts. The words flew out of my mouth before I could even think properly. Oh, this ought to be good. The payouts, huh? What's your issue with that? You, you, you lied about the payouts. Lied how? I handed you a slip of plastic that explained the payouts properly for each outcome. That's, that's... Wait, I might be onto something. No, the, those are the payouts if you're using fair dice. I was making bets assuming you were using two six-sided dice with the standard pips on them. The math makes sense if you do it that way. But if you're using rigged dice and the math is all wrong and the payouts, in turn, is messed up. Therese was silent for a moment as she rubbed her chin for a second. I, well... She was at a loss for words. I wouldn't have made certain bets if I'd known my odds of winning were zero, and I wasn't given any opportunity to adjust my bet to something actually possible. And you lied to my face when I asked you. I asked if I had a 1 in 12 chance to win, and you said, but of course the payouts are based on probability. I've been misled on this bullshit probability that you've been feeding me. Sure, you might not have been clear cut with the dice, but the probability of odds of winning in the payout was listed right in the rules. So if you're tampering with them, then that's definitely cheating. Right? Therese was silent. Bell was silent. The whole room was silent. Just a wave of uncertainty washed over the entire room. 
At least for a moment. Well, I think that Devin has some good points. The sheet clearly defines a probability and appropriate payout. I didn't mind rigged dice because in theory rigged dice could still give these odds if you use them right. And before, Devin was just objecting to the fact that the dice themselves are rigged, not about how they conflicted with the other rules. By combining the rigged, rigged dice and the rigged betting rules, I think it's a fair argument to say that you cheated her out. What? You can't use rigged dice and then tell people that they could win big on a 0% chance. That's just not fair. So, I rule in Devin's favour. You definitely cheated. Are you kidding me? That's what you decided is cheating? Well, what do you want me to say? Even if she somehow bet correctly, she still could have called you a cheater, if not using some the same odds as listed. That's... <laughs> ha, eat shit, Teresa. <laughs> so since Teresa cheated, the last round will be nullified. You get to keep all your credits, Devin. And you get to make a request of Teresa. What'll it be? Huh? Did you forget if you win, you get to make a request? Okay, a thousand credits, please. A way to adjust the rules and make them fair. Can't I just... I can't just ask for credits? No, you can't. Oh. Did you not have a plan for this at all? Did you think just catching me in the act would be enough? Um, yes. Completely amateurish. So I have to do this again? Put my fate into the dice again? Even after all this, I'm still not out of this damn game. So it would seem. I just wanted this to be over. I just wanted this stupid game to be over already. The heck do I even request for? I don't have any real strategies or ideas. Okay, okay, just calm down. First things first. Alright, we're going to wrap this one up here because we're out of time for today. I guess it wasn't the last episode of the gambling one. But the next episode definitely will. So... Yes, we'll beat Teresa, she will die, and everyone will rejoice. The town will be happy, and all will be right in the world. So, thanks for watching, Bruce, and I'll see you in the next one.